guys, welcome back to Spelling and Word Study. My name is Mrs. Rhodes and I'm here to get you started on Unit 24, Long I with I, E, or Y. Please take a second to gather your materials. You will need your red book open to page 149. You will also need some colorful pens, markers, or crayons. Remember, whatever I mark on my board, you should be marking on your page. Please save room for a key as well. So we have spent several weeks now learning about long vowels. We learned that we can make a long A sound by using a vowel team like AI or AY. We can make a long E sound by using EE or EA. We learned that we can make a long O sound by using OA or OW. Well, this week we're gonna learn about two different ways to make the long I sound. We can use a Y in words like cry and dry, or we can use an IE vowel team in words like die and lie. So let's start by reading our list. Please repeat after me, and as you do, listen for that I sound. Cry, die, dry, fly, lie, pie, sky, tie, try, and why. All right, so let's choose a color. And the first thing I want to do is I want to find the words that use Y to make that I sound. Now I know in kindergarten you learned that Y is a vowel and it makes the Y sound in words like yellow and yawn. But in some words it can be used as a vowel. You already saw this in words like day and play where A and Y work together to make a long A sound. Well this week Y is going to stand by itself to make an I sound in cry, dry, fly, sky, try, and Y. So over here, purple box equals long I, or equals Y, but that Y makes a long I sound. All right, let's choose a second color. And this time we're going to be looking for the vowel team IE. Whenever you see, not I shouldn't say whenever, because there are exceptions to everything, but when you see IE at the end of a word, especially a one syllable word, it's gonna say I. So we see that in die and lie pie and tie. Over here, orange box equals IE and that's also going to make a long I sound. All right, now I want to look at um, digraphs. You remember those when we take two letters and put them together to make one sound. SH is a digraph that says Ch is a digraph that says ch, and th is a digraph that says th. Well, today we have another common digraph, and that is the wh. Did you spot it in this word? In the word y, the w and h work together to make the w sound. Now, this is really tricky for kids because in our language, we have a whole bunch of words that start with W H and a whole bunch of words that start with W and they make the same exact sound. So how do we decide if we should use W H or just W? Well, there's no easy answer. It comes down to just memorizing what the words are supposed to look like. But here is a little tip that might help you. When you're trying to write a question word, who, what, when, where or why, you will always use WH, okay? So let's start with that. Let's teach ourselves 
to always use WH at the beginning of a question word. Who, what, when, where, and why. Blue box equals WH digraph. Now we also have lots of blends this week. So when we blend consonants together, they each get to keep their own sound. So we see that in cry, the C and the R both make their own sound, cry. We see that in dry, d -r -i, they keep their own sounds. We see that in fly, fly. We see that in sky, sk -i, and we see that in try, t -r -i. So pay attention to that this week, especially those R blends. Sometimes kids have a hard time hearing the D and the R in words like dry. Sometimes they have a hard time hearing the T and the R in words like truck or train or try. So listen for that. And over here, purple box equals um, consonant, consonant blend. All right, so the next thing I wanna do is I wanna go through our list and talk about the meaning of each word. But as we do, I want to write its part of speech. So we've spent a lot of time talking about verbs. We know that those are actions, things that we can do, that animals can do, that the weather can do. Uh, so for instance, we can cry, right? That's something we do. Tears come out of our eyes. We make sad noises when we cry. Die is another action word, right? All living things die. Plants, animals, people, right? To die means to stop living. Things can dry as well, right? When you take your clothes out of the washing machine, they're soaking wet. You put them in the dryer so they can dry. Fly can be used as a verb, right? Airplanes fly. Birds fly. You can lie. That's a verb, right? When you don't tell the truth, you are lying. Or if you lie down on a bed, right? Two totally different meanings of the same word, right? They are both verbs. Um, you can't pie and you can't sky. You can tie, though. You can tie your shoelaces. You can also... Um, tie the game, right? You, you hit the ball and now the score for both teams is the same. So you tie the game. You can definitely try, right? You try your best. So that's a verb. Um, so this week we have lots of verbs and we're going to come back to those in just a second. But over here we can say that V equals verb. That's our action word. Now let's look for some nouns. We know that nouns are people, places, and things. If you can hold it, if you can touch it, if you can draw a picture of it, it is a noun. So for instance, fly. I told you that's a verb, right? It's an action word, but it can also be a thing if you're talking about an insect, right? Like there's a fly in my soup. That would be used as a noun. Um, a lie can be a noun, right? When you lie to people, you are telling them a lie. Now, um, that would be more of an abstract noun because you can't really draw a picture of it, but it is a thing. Pie is a noun, right? A cherry pie, a pumpkin pie, that's something you can eat. The sky is a noun. You can definitely draw a picture of that. Um, I told you that tie is a verb if you tie your shoelaces or you tie the game. But what about a tie? Like a man when he gets dressed up might wear a suit and tie. That would be a noun. 
Um, and that's it. So over here, n equals now. Okay. Um, there's one word here that we didn't um, label, and that's the word y. And if you want to know what that is, it's actually, um, it can be used in different ways, but it can be used as an adverb. We're just going to skip that for now. We don't need to worry about that too much in first grade. What we do need to think about, though, are our verbs, and specifically our verb tenses. So how do we take the word cry and change it to crying or cried? turns out that there are lots of crazy things happening with these words. You're going to practice them when you get to page 153. You're going to change some of your verbs to the past tense um, and the present tense. But let me show you what it looks like up here. So, Take my green marker. Let's take the word cry. The baby is crying. Nothing tricky there, right? Keep the Y, add I-N-G. Uh, let's take dry. I am drying the towels in the dryer. Dry-ing. Same thing with fly. I am flying to Florida in a few months. Same thing with try. I am trying my best. Adding ing to a verb that ends with y is very easy. But look what happens when we change it to the past tense. Now I cry. I cried last night. Notice my Y changes to an I, and then I add ED. Same thing with dried. I dried the towels. My Y changes to an I, and then I add ED. I'm going to skip this one for a second. Let's go to try. I try really hard at school. I tried really hard on yesterday's test. Change my Y to I, add ED. That's the first weird thing you have to remember this week. That when your verb ends with Y, when it's just one Y by itself and no other vowels, you have to change the Y to I and then add ED. The reason I skipped this one is because there's no such word as fly. I would never say I flied to Florida last winter. I would say I flew. Okay? That is a rule breaker. It's a whole new word. So that's the first thing I want you to remember. Now, I want you to look at the word die. If I want to change die to dying, like my phone is dying, I have to plug it in, right? Or my plants are dying, I have to water them. We do the opposite. Instead of changing a Y to I, um, a Y to I, we're flip-flopping. We're taking that IE and we're changing them to a Y. Isn't that strange? So die becomes dying lie becomes lying, like stop lying to me, tell me the truth. Um, and then tie becomes tying. So in all three of these examples, when my verb ends with I-E, I have to change it to Y before I add I-N-G. Now if I want to change it to the past tense, I have to drop that E before I add ED. My dog died. Um, I think you lied to me. Um, 
and I tied by shoelaces, okay? We drop our E and then we add ED. If we forget to do that, it's gonna look really silly because we're gonna have T-I-E-E-D, just way too many vowels in the middle of the word. So like I said, you'll get more practice with this when you get further into the unit. All right, I think that's all I have for you now. So good luck and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.